I spoke with a man who was central to planning our invasion of Iraq and who started a new controversy with his harsh criticism of President Obama's foreign policy. Former Vice President Dick Cheney is passionate in offering his critique of the Obama doctrine in fighting the war on terror. He feels deeply this president is taking us down the wrong path. But I couldn't ignore how many feel he's the one who got it all wrong and wrong from the start. For instance, his certainty Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction when we invaded. We had intelligence that went back into the Clinton years. The first intelligence report we received uh, right after we were elected, uh, before we were sworn in, was a report from the CIA that warned about Iraq and WMD. Everybody believed that Saddam Hussein had WMD. He'd produced it and used it before. Let me ask you about two other statements. Mm -hmm. um, you said the U.S. would be greeted in Iraq as liberators. Again, that's what we've been told by intelligence. And initially there was great uh, satisfaction. But having said that, in 2005, you said the insurgency was in its last throes right. just before it got much worse. I obviously misjudged the situation. Um, it turned out the problem was going to be much uh, tougher than we thought it was going to be. Some people say, hey, why should we listen to him? Back when he was in charge, he was wrong about a lot of these well, things. Well, I think most of the people who say that were critics of the policy in the first place. But I'd come back to the proposition that uh, by the time we finished in Iraq, we had, as we were leaving office, we had in fact dealt with most of that problem. We had the Sunni united with the Shia and the government. We had the relatively effective uh, military forces left uh, with respect to the Iraqis. And uh, we had pretty well stabilized the situation as Barack Obama himself himself said. Uh, so we were in good shape by the time we, uh, we left office in, uh, in Iraq. President Obama said he was leaving a country that was sovereign, stable, and self-reliant. Right. What went wrong, Mr. Vice President? Well, what I believe went wrong was the, the failure to negotiate a stay-behind agreement. Um, they were unable to, to reach an agreement for status of forces. Now, the U.S. military, our generals, wanted to stay behind force of close to 20,000 people, 18 to 20,000 people. The White House said no. So, what would you do now? Well, I, as I say, I'd start by reversing most of the Obama policies. I'd rebuild the U.S. military. I mean, specifically, how would you take on ISIS today? Well, I would work hard with those states that are around there. Jordan comes immediately to mind. I'd go to the Saudis and the Emirates and the UAE uh, and restore their confidence in the United States that we're in this fight with them, that we've got their back, that we're willing to make the kinds of commitments of, of resources and personnel and our own military capability so that if they do get a caliphate established in um, uh, that region, say Iraq and Syria, that uh, we will, you know, we'll have skin in the game. But would you reintroduce U.S. ground troops? To do what? Uh, if it's to go in and uh, fight a major battle, um, uh, I'd be reluctant to do that, partly because of the confused political situation inside Iraq itself. I would give serious thought to uh, the, um, some of the kinds of things we were able to do in Iraq previously with our special ops guys. Uh, they are, are very good, very sophisticated, able to target individuals. How do you feel about bringing Iran into the discussion about Iraq? Bad idea. The, uh, the Iranians are, in many respects, the com common enemy for a lot of our friends out there. The uh, uh, idea that we're going to welcome Iran into solving the problem in Iraq is like bringing the Russians in to solve the problem in Ukraine. As you understand it, what is the Obama doctrine in fighting terrorism? Uh, well, for starters, they don't believe there's a problem, or at least they act that way. They've said as much. They went from a situation where they got bin Laden uh, in 2011, and then their attitude after that has been, well, we got bin Laden problem solved. Secondly, uh, he's been heavily involved in trying to withdraw the U.S. from the Middle East. And they had all this story about a pivot to Asia. We got out of uh, Iraq and didn't leave a state behind force there. He's already announced he wants to do the same thing and get it totally out of Afghanistan. Uh, the result of all of that is to significantly diminish the capacity of the United States government to influence events in that part of the
the world. I've got a lot of friends out there from the last 25 years, and to a person, Arab, Israeli, they all have lost confidence in the United States. They no longer believe they can count on us. A lot of what's involved in, in the Obama doctrine, I think, is to significantly diminish the capacity of the United States to influence events around the world. He's not decimating al-Qaeda, he's decimating our own Defense Department. To what end would he want to weaken our capability? I think he really believes that a strong U.S. is disruptive to what he thinks uh, the world ought to be. The United States has played a role for good in the world, for stability and peace and peacekeeping with significant military assets and the willingness to use them occasionally. I don't think he believes in that. I think his worldview is um, different than what has been the national consensus, Republican and Democrat alike, since World War II, and that is that the U.S. has a major leading role to play in the world. Just on a personal level, when you think of all the blood and treasure that we spent in Fallujah, in Mosul, in Ramadi, to see it all go back to Al-Qaeda, how does it make you feel? Well, um, it's a tragedy. It didn't have to happen this way. I mean, if, if in fact, uh, the situation that we left uh, in 07 and 08 after the surge with Iraq in, in uh, relatively good order, and a stay-behind force there to keep it that way, um, it would be a lot easier for the parents and the, and the families of those who gave their lives there to, uh, to accept it. Final question. Um, why are you speaking out? I mean, it seems clear that you are on a kind of offensive mm -hmm. to, to speak out about this. And you must realize, given how polarizing a figure that you are, that for some Americans, your criticism will only make President Obama more popular. <laughs> well, uh, he's going to need a lot more help than that to improve his current standing in the polls. But um, I'm convinced that the fate of the republic is heavily involved in these issues. And if I don't speak out, I don't know who else will. And uh, I feel uh, that I can speak with some credibility because I've been there, I've been involved in all those discussions and developments, and uh, I feel uh, very strongly that it's important to do it. I believe in it. I don't need to sort of re-engage in the political wars, but I really, really believe that uh, we are in big trouble and uh, that this president's not likely to get us out of it. Is Dick Cheney's message getting through? We'll discuss that after the break.